Hello and welcome to the learning square. In today's tutorial, I will talk about the image sampling and quantization part of images. So we have seen acquisition of images in the last turn. So in this lecture, we will look at the image sensing and representation, the sampling and quantization, as well as the resolution in an image. So before we actually discuss the image acquisition, we should recall that a digital image is composed of maybe M rows and N columns, which are basically pixels storing the value of intensity for each and every pixel. So the intensity could be 0 to 255 if I have an 8-bit image because each bit would be able to represent a 8-bit number. So it would range from 0 to 2 to power 8 minus 1. If it's a binary image, I would have just a single value for each and every pixel wherein the values could be either 0 or 1 and so on. Uh, similarly, if I have an RGB image, it would be a 3-plane image wherein one plane would be for red, the other would be for green and the third plane would be for blue and each and every intensity level would be ranging from 0 to 255. We can see that images can be naturally represented at as matrices and hence MATLAB is so popular with image processing. Now in the last turn we saw that images are typically generated by illuminating a scene and there is some amount of energy which is reflected and a part of it is transmitted. So the reflected energy now lands on an imaging sensor and we have some sensing material which is responsive to the type of energy which is falling on that sensor and it generates a voltage which is then captured to collect the images. So if I have a line of image sensors, I would be creating a line of images. If I have an array of image sensors, I would be creating a 2D image. So moving on to the term of resolution of an image. So the first one is the pixel count resolution which simply re tells us the amount of pixels, the number of pixels in a digital image. And we generally use megapixel term to be able to represent 1 million pixels. The other term which we use is the spatial resolution which tells us the number of pixels in a spatial measurement of, of a physical image. So how many pixels are there per inch of an actual print of an image. So there is another term DPI which is associated with printers which, which is commonly used in place of pixels per inch. So this is telling dots per inch but it is actually telling you how many pixels per inch we are getting as an output. Then the third term is the temporal resolution. So the temporal resolution is in terms of time. So if I take pictures daily of a particular scene then the, the temporal resolution for that particular scene would be one day. If I am taking it maybe 4 hourly, then the temporal resolution 4 hours and so on. Now the storage requirement. So if I have a digital image here, there is something called an intensity resolution and a spatial resolution. Now if I am talking about the intensity resolution, then I am talking about how many bits are there for each and every pixel which is there in the image. So suppose this is an 8 bit image, I would have 8 bit intensity resolution for each and every pixel. So I would be able to distinguish between 0 to 255 levels of gray values in this particular image. So my intensity resolution would be 8 bits per pixel. If I am talking about the spatial resolution, then I am talking about the width of each and every pixel. So effectively if I have smaller grids, then I would have a better resolution in terms of spa spatial resolution. So effectively, if I need to find out the storage requirement for 1024 by 1024 binary image, then it would mean that I have 1024 pixels across the length and width and it's a binary image. So I would just need one pixel of intensity values. So the size would be this much. If I'm talking about the same size image, but a 24 bit color image, then for each and every bit, I would need eight bits each and I would have three bands, R, G, B bands. So I would need 1024 into 1024 into 3 for each of the planes and 8 bits per plane per pixel. So this is the size I would have. Now to be able to understand sampling and quantization, we can assume that an image is con continuous with respect to the x and y coordinate and also in amplitude. To convert it to digital form, we have to sample the function in both the coordinates and in the amplitude form. So digitizing the coordinate value is called sampling whereas digitizing the amplitude value is called the quantization. So we will see an example here. So suppose I have an image like this and I am just acquiring a line here in this across this particular image. So I would be able to replicate this entire image by taking lines across this entire image and being able to convert it to a digital form. So let's see how we do it. So if I look at the intensity value of this line AB, 
across this plane then I start with a 255 value assuming that this is an 8 bit image so initially I would have 255 intensity values then as soon as I come here it becomes dark you can see it becomes a little lighter here when we are here and then it again it becomes dark and then as soon as I reach this point and I move towards B I am again back to 255 intensity value now this is the sampling wherein I am dividing this particular space into discrete quantities so this is giving me the sampling as to when I am acquiring this particular intensity values so spacing this out is the sampling and quantization is for the amplitude value of each and every intensity pixel and quantization is to give the intensity value for each and every pixel in question so here suppose I have 8 quantization levels so that is a 3 bit image then I could just quantize this as completely white I could quantize this as completely black and then I could just give values which are closest to these particular intensity values according to this graph so I would have a gra graph like this wherein these four pixels are getting intensity values 255 and one over here is getting this quantization level these two are getting this quantization level and so on so this is how my analog signal is now converted to a digital form so you could see it more clearly over here so this is my sampling and this is my quantization levels I have divided this into samples across this particular line and I'm now finding out the quantized level for each and every pixel so approximately we are able to get the quantized level and the digital form of this image if I take a smaller spatial spatial resolution that is I take intensity values at a closer value then I'll be able to get a smaller grid here and it will be closer to this particular figure so spatial resolution of an image is determined by how sampling was carried out it, ref uh, it actually refers to the smallest discernible detail in the image this is also referred to as DPI now the spatial ref resolution depends on number of pixels of the image and number of bits necessary to adequately show intensity resolution so number of pixels would be number of rows into number of columns and the bits required would be m if 2 to the power m intensity levels are needed so the total size like we saw in the previous examples would be number of pixels into number of bits for each and every pixel so looking at spatial resolution if I have a 1024 cross 1024 image so what I'm doing here is to be able to get half the values I just maybe ignore half of the alternate columns and then half of the alternate co uh, rows to be able to get the resolution of 512 cross 512 and similarly I can go out go down to 256 128 64 and so on so you could see how things look like when I keep reducing the resolution so it starts to pixelate when my resolution becomes smaller now aliasing can arise when you sample a continuous signal or image it occurs when your sampling rate is not high enough to be able to capture the amount of details in your image so essentially you know that all signals there's a Nyquist rate or there's a Shannon sampling theorem which tells us that what is the frequency at which I should be able to sample to be able to get the original image back so the sampling rate actually should be high enough to capture the highest frequency in the image so if I take a 2d example of this if this is my image if I do the sampling with these pixels I'm able to replicate the original thing but if this is what my sampling is then I'm just getting black pixels and I'm not able to actually get the white pixels back even such a sampling would be bad sampling I'll not be able to generate the original figure from this so this is for down sampling when I just want to zoom out from the image now to be able to zoom in into the image I want up sampling so what I want to do is I want to find out the value of pixel at fractional positions so I want to maybe find out the values at these pixels which are intermediate for this there are various algorithms which are available the simplest one is the bilinear sampling wherein we simply just try to find out the distances from the particular intensity value and we try to interpolate to be able to find out the effective value of this particular pixel in question now there's something called a nearest neighbor wherein suppose I'm talking about this particular pixel the nearest neighbor would be this so I would simply give this pixel the value fx plus 1 y 
so i'm talking about the nearest neighbor this is the kind of upsampling result that we get bilinear we would look into details later on after this slide and this this is something called a bicubic again now to be able to understand interpolation it is simply assuming that if i have two quantities which are known and i want to find out the interpolation estimate of two quantities which is in which is kind of in between this suppose i know the marks out of 50 out of 100 of a particular person and i want to find out how many would it would he have got out of 75 then i simply just do an interpolation by assuming that this is a straight line so this is known as the simple linear interpolation there are various types of interpolation algorithms that we have the two major categories for interpolation algorithms one is the non adaptive and the other is the adaptive algorithms now image interpolation works in two directions and tries to achieve a best approximation of a pixel's color and intensity based on the values of the surrounding pixels So, in case of non-adaptive algorithms, the most commonly used ones are the nearest neighbor, bilinear, bicubic, etc. So, depending on their complexity, th these are used anywhere from zero to two fifty six or more adjacent pixels while interpolating. So, the more the adjacent pixels they include, the more accurate they become. But this becomes more expensive in terms of longer processing time also. So, depending on how much accuracy can we trade off with the time, we use that particular value. so these algorithms are used to both distort and resize a photo then there are adaptive algorithms which are basically proprietary algorithms which we will not study in this particular syllabus now looking at the most common non adaptive algorithms the first one is the nearest neighbor in which like i told you it is the most basic and requires the least amount of processing time as all the interpolation algorithms because it only considers one pixel the one which is closest you just map it completely into the one that you're seeking for the one you are seeking the value for the bilinear interpolation basically takes up four neighborhood pixels so what it does is it considers the closest two cross two neighborhood of a known pixel and then you take a weighted average of these four pixels to arrive at the final interpolated value bicubic actually takes a step further and it takes the four cross four neighborhood of a known pixel so that is we are talking about 16 pixels and there are various weights assigned and then the final value for the intermediate pixel is got so in case of a bilinear interpolation this is how we get it we try to find out the values so if this is rc this is rc plus 1 r plus 1 c and r plus 1 c plus 1 these are the pixels in terms of x and y coordinates and i'm trying to find out the value for r and c here so this is the formula that i get i take the intensity value of irc multiply it 1 minus delta r so i'm trying to find out the distances of each and every intensity from this particular location and i'm simply just interpolating and adding these intensity values up and this is how i get the intensity value for this particular r dash c dash here so this algorithm we've actually uh, borrowed it from the slide mentioned now let's get into the programming the same thing using matlab So I have created a function here called bilinear interpolation, which is taking inputs as uh, the image and the dimension that I want to take the output as. So we just take the number of rows and number of columns of the input image, and the number of rows and columns that we have want in our dimension here is stored as out rows and out columns here. Then we find out all these values, which are basically trying to evaluate the same. values shown in this uh, particular slide here so we can see that delta r and delta c are the values shown here as delta r delta c sr and sc are giving us the ratio of the in and col rows versus the out rows and in columns versus the out columns we define a grid of coordinates in our image and generate each and every pair of x y for each and every point of our image using this temporary grid here so here rf is equal to we are multiplying this by this factor here as shown here sr and sc once this is done we start calculating all these values now sub to end is basically trying to be able to define the index of the pixel in question generally my matrices are addressed as rows comma columns but if if i want a single indexing then sub to index gives me a single index of the same matrix so i find out these index uh, indexes of the pixels in 
the neighborhood and then I try to interpolate them. So this entire formula is the same that we have written in our slide and my out would then have the output which is given here in the function. So let's run it. To be able to run it I'll just maybe read an image. So this is the image that we will read and I can see the dimensions of this is 256 cross 256. I will call this function bilinear interpolation with im as the input and I want maybe the matrix dimensions as 512 comma 512. So I get the answer like this and I could just say I am show ANS. This is the image that I get. I could also see the original image using so this was my original image and this is the new image that I am getting. I could use this function again so maybe I read a colored image here peppers.png and I maybe assign this value to b is equal to b is equal to bilinear interpolation I call this value with a here and the dimensions that I want for this particular file would be again this so you can see this is, is distorted because this is what my original image looks like and this is the new image that I am getting. You can see it's a little distorted here because the original image was of the size 384 cross 512 whereas the new file that I am wanting is of the size 512 cross 512. So obviously there is some distortion but the program performs perfectly fine. Now continuing with our slides here, next we look at the intensity level resolution. So intensity level resolution refers to the number of intensity levels used to represent the image. So like I have told earlier, number of bits if I have one, then the number of intensity levels I would have is 2. That is 2 to the power number of bits would be we would be able to represent here. So if I change the intensity level resolution, then you can see a 256 gray level image. I am able to distinguish between a lot of shades of gray. but as we I reduce the intensity level resolution, I am able to distinguish only a few levels of gray here. So obviously I am losing upon the resolution of the image and details of the image. So you can see here in details, there are certain artifacts which ca start coming into the pic picture. If I reduce the intensity level beyond a certain limit, how the bit resolutions can be changed. So I just take a simple example wherein I read in cameraman.tiff. Now the output for this would be the number of rows, number of columns and the number of planes here. So S would be simply 1 because this is a uh, grayscale image. This would have number of rows, number of, of columns. I am trying to find out the maximum value of this and here what I have done is I have just taken a value of an array in B. I am taking this and I am just taking the powers of these values. So here I am taking 2 to the power 2. 2 to the power 3 and 2 to the power 4 and I am just dividing the intensity values of each and every pixel by these values. So initially I would be dividing the intensity levels by 2 so that I, that is I would have 2 to the power 2 here I would be dividing by 4 I would be dividing by 8 in the next one and I would be dividing by 16 in the next round and I would be seeing the images. So let's see how th they look like. So you could see If my um, original image is like this, dividing it by 4 gives me this value, dividing by 8 gives me this value and dividing by 16 gives me this intensity values. I could also maybe change it from to 6, 7, 8 and let's see what happens. You can see now the intensity levels are reduced and this is how my images look like. So my bit resolutions if they if I change the bit resolutions this is what my images look like. How much is enough is uh, actually a big question and it is a very subjective matter it depends on how many pixels you are able to accommodate the size of the images and the resolution that you're looking at. Now let's look at other experiments here. So here I'm just reading an image here resizing it. So there is an inbuilt command called im resize available in MATLAB wherein whatever figure I want to resize is put here which is my image. I have read this image. The size that I want to re resize it into 
and the algorithm that I want to use. So they are nearest this bilinear and all these algorithms are automatically available. So you really don't need to write the code yourself. You could use these inbuilt functions. Then I'm converting this colored image into a gray image. And I'm also converting into a binary image, which is a black and white image using IM2BW command. I'm displaying these. So subplot is basically I'm dividing my entire grid into an area of four, that is two cross two. And in the first subplot, I'm seeing the original color image. In the second subplot, I'm seeing the gray image. In the third subplot, I'm seeing the binary image. Let's see how it runs. So you could see here, this is my original image, this is the gray image, and this is the binary image. Now there's something called an IM profile, which tells us that if I draw a line across from this point 1045 in this image to 50, 10, 100. So these are the X and Y coordinates of my first point, and this is the X, Y coordinate of the second point. And I'm actually drawing a line between these two. So I'm drawing this line on which particular image? I'm drawing it on, on my gray image. And these are the coordinates that I am drawing the line to. Then what is the intensity profile of this particular line? Then the kind of intensity values that I would have would be something like this for a particular line here in the gray image. So this brings us to the end of this lecture. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.